Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the SWUS. Doing Rays O's in this one, but as always, we'll go through all 15 games on the live show, 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. If you're able to make it, we'd love to see in the comments. Baltimore, Tampa, let's roll. Welcome to the SWUS. The SWUS. SWUS. Get the sewers. Okay, let's get into this one and kind of a weird situation here. So the line still isn't open for this game. I'm recording this at 11.53 p.m. Eastern time. Still no line open. Um, so I made this whole video, handicapped the game, had it ready. And what I was going to do is when the line opened, I was going to add those parts in and add my pick at the end. But it's, I mean, it's almost midnight and there's no line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my handicap uh, with you and then I'll let you know wh what I want to do at the end. Um, but as of right now, there's no line open, and I'll tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to make this. I'm going to upload it, and then the line's going to open right away, and I'm going to be pissed. But uh, here we go. Let's take a quick look at the spreadsheet. And according to the model, we got a slight lean on Tampa in the first five. 3.22 to 3.04. Final score swings back towards Baltimore a little bit, though. 5.59 to 5.36. All right, so let's take a look at this matchup. And before we really get into it, we got to point out the spot here. Baltimore just played a game all the way up in Toronto, immediately had to fly all the way down to Tampa with no days off. Meanwhile, Rays had the day off. Rays did not have a game on Thursday. So before we even get started, I'm already leaning towards Tampa a bit because it's a much better spot for them. So let's start with Baltimore's bats. Uh, as we know, the O's can hit. Uh, in the last 14 days, arguably the best lineup in baseball. First in WRC+, plus, first in OPS, second in WOBA. Top 5, top 10 lineup in the last 30 days as well. Uh, against right-handed pitching, same thing. In fact, even better. This is probably the best lineup in baseball against right-handed uh, pitching as of late. In the last 30 days, 5th, 4th, and 6th. In the last 14 days, 1st, 1st, and 1st. This Orioles lineup is also hitting on the road. Uh, in the last 30 days, just 20th, 20th, and 20th. But if you look at their numbers on the full season and in the last 14 days, being away from Baltimore is no reason not to trust this lineup. So Baltimore can hit on the road. Uh, they also can hit bullpens. Surprise, surprise. On uh, the last 14 days, they're actually first across the board. In the last 30 days, 10th, 7th, and 12th. So the Orioles can hit bullpens as well. If you take a look at some game logs, these are recent righty starters to pitch against the Orioles. Uh, you can see they got to Berrios, got to Francis, got to Gosman. Actually, only seven base runners in six and a third innings against Gosman. They scored six earned runs, though. So they got to him, but that maybe not nearly as bad as, as it looks. 11 hits off Littell, who's been pitching well. Uh, didn't really get to Savale, which is ironic because that's who they're about to see. Uh, so Savale did just pitch against Baltimore May 31st, and he pitched well. So that's something to take note of. Speaking of Savale, let's take a look at his stuff. I can see in the last three starts mediocre i guess 402 era 140 whip 497 expected fib it's not terrible if you stretch it back to eight starts though he's got a 692 era which obviously isn't good um last couple home starts has been solid 372 era 124 whip and a 456 expected fib now 456 expected fib indicates maybe a little bit of good luck and he's bound to regress at some point uh but if you take a look at his game logs I mean, these are solid, man. Uh, his most recent start was against Baltimore. On the road in Baltimore, and he pitched well. Five and a third innings, just six hits and a walk. One earned run. It's a great start. Uh, he also pitched really well against the Royals. His last, the, the timeout before that. Uh, you go back to his start on the road in Toronto. A little rough looking, but... As a whole, Savali's been pitching really well the last two games. I don't like that the Orioles just saw him a week ago, though. Definitely leads me to believe they probably get to him this time. And what makes it even worse is when you look at Savali's righty-lefty splits. 360 Woba, 154 Whip, and a 359 Expect. Actually, 359 Expected Fib isn't bad at all. Uh, but 360 Woba, 154 Whip against lefties. Look at the Orioles lineup. Five of their first six hitters are lefties. Six out of the nine hitters in their lineup are lefties. It's a lefty-heavy lineup, and you got Savale, who struggles a little bit against lefties and who just pitched well against Baltimore just over a week ago or about a week ago. Yeah, I think the O's are going to get to Savale here. Now, I guess some good news for the Rays would be their bullpen is improving a little, I guess. In the last 30 days, 8th in ERA, 21st in Woba, 14th in expected FIP. It's not great, but it's certainly not as bad as it was to start the year. But the thing is, they're just not producing at the drop. At home, I mean, this has been one of the worst bullpens in baseball at home this year. Um, so an Orioles lineup that gets the bullpens. Overall, 
I, I expect the Orioles to get to Savali, and they should be able to get to Tampa's bullpen as well. Now let's flip it over to the other side, and now we're looking at Tampa's bats. Uh, last 14 days, they're 14th in WRC+, 22nd in OPS, 20th in WOBA. Uh, last seven days, though, 8th, 11th, and 10th, so maybe the Tampa Bay lineup coming to life a little bit. You can see their numbers against lefties look a lot better. In the last 14 days, 11th, 13th, and 14th. In the last 30 days, 8th, 9th, and 8th. But then we get to their numbers at home, and it's actually crazy. The Rays hitting numbers are almost the exact opposite of what they were last year. Last year, they were absolutely dominant at home in the trop. This year, I mean, last 14 days, bottom five, bottom six lineup in baseball at home. Last 30 days, bottom three, bottom four lineup in baseball at home. On the season, 13th in WRC+, plus, 22nd in OPS, 21st in WOBA. So this is an average to below average lineup at home this year. But it looks like Cole Irvin is going to get the start. We're not 100% sure about that. I don't think it's been confirmed yet. But if Cole Irvin pitches... I mean, that's where we get to some good news for Tampa. I mean, I just showed you their numbers against lefties. Look at recent lefty starters' numbers against them. The last two lefty starters to pitch against the Rays have a 928 ERA in those games, 188 whip. And look at the last four lefty starters, an ERA over 11 and a 209 whip. I mean, you could say what you want about the Tampa bats, but if you look at these game logs, they crushed Lazardo, who had been dealing. They got to Cole Irvin, eight hits and a walk in six and a third innings. They got to him. Five hits and three walks and five and a third innings, four and runs off Nestor. They crush Quintana. So the last four lefty starters that pitch against the Rays got crushed. And speaking of Cole Irvin, let's take a look at his stuff. Uh, obviously, we know Cole Irvin's having a great season. He's got a 284 ERA and a 116 whip on the year. 428 expected FIP indicates he's been had a little bit of good luck, but regardless, he's been pitching well. Look at his last four starts. Expected FIP is now up to 540 in those starts. And again, there's some regression on the way for Cole. And I mean, look at his last road start. An 810 ERA and a 180 whip. 616 expected FIP. Are we starting to see the regression from Cole Irvin now? Tough to say. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but two of his last three starts were bad. And the last one was against Tampa. None other than the Rays. Eight hits and a walk and 630 innings pitch. I shouldn't say that's bad. That's just not great. A 619 expected FIP. I mean, nine base runners in six and a third innings. They were getting to him. And then look at his last road start. On the road in Bush Stadium, the Cards, six hits, three earned runs, and just three and a third innings pitch. And the Cardinals hadn't even been hitting lefties this year. So Cole Irvin, are we starting to see regression from this guy? If we take a look at Cole Irvin's righty-lefty splits, you can see he's much better against lefty bats. Actually struggles a little bit against righty bats. Woba up at 316, 133 whip. Want to see the Tampa projected lineup in this game? Nine righties. <laughs> nine right-handed bats. Cole Irvin going to be pitching to nine straight righties. Or this is the projected lineup. We'll have to wait and see. But looking like nine righties for the Rays here. So I like the Orioles to get their revenge on Savali. I think Baltimore's going to put up some runs here, both on Savali and on the bullpen. And I like the Rays to get to uh, Cole Irvin. I think it's a bad spot for him. Not the greatest spot for the Orioles as a whole, having to travel down from Toronto. I think we should just take the over here. Um, I don't want to take Baltimore in this bad spot, even though I do think they're going to score runs. So I think the best move in this situation is just take the over. And I'm, as I'm recording this, we still don't have a line. Yeah, so like I said, still no line open. Um, if Cole Irvin pitches, I like the over. But honestly, I probably like the over even if Kyle Bradish pitches. I just feel like we'll get a, a shittier price on it. So probably going to be on the over either way. Uh, we'll talk about it on the live show, 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Uh, yeah, see you there.